Welcome to the channel. Today I'd like to give a quick overview of my CNC mill and give you kind of a flavor of what I did. Um, I won't go over too much in detail about how I converted this into a CNC uh, mill, but I do highly recommend going over to um, Practical Renaissance. I'll link a video to him, uh, his video in the description of this video, but it's ultimately the same type of setup um, as well as Cloud42 uh, and his setup. It's all about the same. Uh, so this is just a standard G0704. Uh, went ahead and put all the electronics uh, within here. Uh, you can see the um, Ethernet smooth stepper, uh, the controller board, and then all the stepper drivers. Uh, I do have a solenoid valve hooked up on a separate uh, breakout board uh, down there, but that's not hooked up at the moment, but uh, it eventually will be running the coolant uh, system. Uh, there is another device that you can't really see back there, but there is an electronic brake. Um, if you are running one of these systems, you'll know uh, the Z axis is actually very heavy. Um, so because of the head of the mill, um, and if you have your ball screw set up on the Z axis, when it comes down, it actually is running at a very fast rate, which to the point that when you say stop on the motor, if the motor just turns slightly, um, it will blow your power supply. Um, so there is a separate Z brake um, kind of electronic device that I put with the board. I can leave a product description of the one that I found, but I just found a used one off of eBay. Um, and that, you know, simply just controls that Z axis so it doesn't, you know, when it stops or comes to an abrupt stop, uh, that the momentum of the head ends up causing it to uh, crash or, you know, explode your <laughs> your power supply. So anyway, um, I do have eventually coming up, uh, that is my probe. Uh, so once I get the um, TTS style tool holder set up in here with the belt drive system, that tool will use for offsets. Right now I just use a center finder and do it the old-fashioned way. Um, did add a separate style, um, you know, coolant system. Uh, this is just a mister. Uh, it is a Chinese version knockoff, but I do like it because these uh, knobs are actually really easy to use um, and put them right into the, uh, the head of the machine using an existing hole uh, on the side there. Um, that all runs back, and I'll show you the back of the, the mill. Um, but that all comes back here into a reservoir uh, that I have set up, uh, just a cheap reservoir that I ended up actually just uh, taping a hose to currently. Uh, and then that runs to the airline, which just bought one of these cheap uh, airline systems. Uh, again, this is for the automatic tool changer when I get that in there. Uh, so the pressure regulator and an extra filter. Um, and then this is the separate cutoff for the coolant system. And then it attaches down here uh, with the air hose, uh, which eventually I'll run an air hose through the whole shop. Um, so I've seen this on a couple videos. Um, just wanted to go over, you know, having a tool chest right next to the machine is probably one of the best things ever. And the reason why, you know, all of your tools, in this case, I have all of my, you know, bits back there, all my CNC bits, um, parallels, tools for the, you know, changing out the spindle, um, but also, you know, like a paintbrush is easy to, you know, brush chips away. So, you know, I recommend if... Uh, just a cheap set of Harbor Freight uh, end mills, which, by the way, work perfectly fine. Um, so do recommend that as well. Um, I am using a micro PC or mini PC, as some would say. Um, 
this company, and sorry it's upside down, but uh, this B-Link um, setup is great. It actually, um, that's the whole computer and it runs Mach 3 just fine. Um, I have it set up on a custom stand with a touchscreen uh, monitor. And with that touchscreen monitor, you know, you can go in here and everything's, you know, fully functional on mock. So it's great that you can just go in here, click the button and call it a day. Now, one thing that I cannot stress enough is if you have a CNC and you just want to do manual milling, because you do remove the handles, picking up something like this will change your life forever. So... I I can't stress it enough. The e-stop, you know, you can wire the e-stop into the machine to, you know, have it hooked up to your spindle, which eventually will be. Um, but the e-stop automatically syncs with mock. It's very easy. When you click the e-stop button, you'll see it just aired out. So, you know, it, it, it's just, it, it's great. You can sit here, select your axis, for example, or, we're going to move the uh, the x-axis, and we have it set on velocity, so it means as fast as you spin this, it'll spin the, the axis. So if you spin it faster, it'll move faster. Uh, I, again, I, I would not have a CNC by running it on a keyboard or something because this gives you just that step. You know, you can change it right here into step mode. And you can just be moving at micro steps. And the nice part is, is I don't know if you can see it, but it has the display where you can tell it how many steps to move in one click. So if you are just trying to part something off, or in this case, I'm just trying to, I don't need dimensions and need to create a program. I can just go right in here, line this up with this part and start taking cuts on it. So again, this is probably the, the nicest thing I've ever bought for a CNC, and it just turns a whole CNC mill back into a manual mill, but you at least have the encoder for you to do, uh, you know, all of the manual steps yourself. Um, the other nice function about this thing is um, this is made by iMock. It's the iMock 3. I forget the actual company name that makes it, but... Um, I bought this used on eBay. Someone was getting rid of it. it had all the parts and pieces. Um, so, again, they do run fairly expensive. Um, but if you can get a deal on one or find one with the you know someone trying to sell used, again, it's it's uh, it, it was well worth the money. The uh, cool function too is you have the start stop function. Um, you do have a rewind function, and if I hook up my spindle, I will have a spindle on-off function just right here on the controller. Um, a lot of different settings you can do. Um, there's a, a lot of other videos out there that you can just search the iMock 3, and uh, people go through step-by-step. -step. Um, but compared to other cheaper versions or other cheaper options, um, that's just one thing I would not skimp on is an is a encoder. Because the more money you spend, the nicer quality and the more reliability you have and the more accuracy you have. So um, that really kind of sums it up today. So, you know, everything is fully functional. It's in one nice package cart with everything. Uh, all the electronics are down below. Went ahead here and built kind of an enclosure uh, just using some clamps and a, and a dollar store, you know shower curtain but you know it keeps everything nice and uh and easy to change out you know this is just regular plastic tarp so you know if i need a new sheet just peel it off and staple a new one back on um haven't had to really touch it though so i wouldn't spend money on the backer boards i'm not really running heavy coolant where you know i'm not worried about coolant getting off the table so this wood you know it's, it's not normally the best to do stuff out of wood and just leave it raw but i don't have any coolant flowing you know i don't even have coolant coming you know flooding the table this is just a mister which to be honest with you is the easiest thing ever so anyway if uh you have any questions comments uh leave it down below i just figured why not show off the tool and 
show off the uh, the fun. Um, I do have to say, you know, when you do this yourself, you end up, uh, you know, making these parts. And if it's the first time you're running it, or if you didn't square something up, you might need shims. But, you know, just something cool, able to do. And uh, wasn't wasn't that expensive. It's just more or less time of making the parts yourself if you don't want to buy the kit. So, anyway, thanks for watching. And please like, share, subscribe. Uh, to my channel. Hopefully more things are coming out, especially with the lathe. So hopefully you'll see the build video for this before this video. And yeah, like I said, um, Cloud 42's electronic lead screw is already planned as the first upgrade for the lathe when it shows up. Uh, already have the electronics, already set it up and programmed it. So that's sitting upstairs next to the uh, 3D printer. But yeah, so like I said, hopefully... You know, my video qualities will get a little bit better, but if not, whatever. <laughs> you guys have a great day and thanks for watching.